Hello and welcome to Jamaica TV, where we give you all the latest news. Now for the details. Police seize the four firearms, including two eye-powered weapons, a bulletproof vest during an operation on Cherry Tree Lane four paths in Clarendon on Thursday, one AK-47 rifle, one AM-15 rifle, one Smith & Wesson 9mm pistol, and 340 rounds of ammunition were included in the find. Reports are that about 4.20 a.m. to 5.45 a.m., a police team inclusive of Maypen CIB Area 3, Major Investigation Division and Operational Support Team and Specialized Operation conducted an operation. The cashier was found in a barrel during a search of a premises. No arrest has been made in connection with the finding. Two men have been arrested in connection with the seizure of a firearm and several rounds of ammunition. During a joint police military operation in Quarry Hill, Spanish Town, St. Catherine, on Wednesday. Reports from the Spanish Town police are that about 8 40 p.m., cops were conducting an operation in the area when they were alerted to a candlelight session being held. On their arrival, two men were seen acting in a manner that arose their suspicion. They were accosted and searched along with a motor vehicle that was in the vicinity. During the search, one Astro A79 mm pistol with a magazine affixed containing five 9 mm rounds was found. The men were arrested, however, their identities are being withheld pending further investigations. The Veterinarian Service Division is reminding Jamaica to purchase meat from lice and butchers only. A call, it said, comes in the interest of public safety and to encourage responsibility among consumers to make wise and healthy food decisions. Once you ensure that you purchase it from the right place, such as a licensed butcher, who have the meat properly inspected by the public health department, it's good. Don't just purchase the meat from anybody, such as someone that the public health inspector would not have access to. Why go and buy it? You must ensure that you take in your hands the business of food safety also, and you must know where your food is coming from, Dr. Watson said. The chief veterinarian also said individuals should make check on establishments selling meat to ensure that the business is registered. He reminded us to ensure our meat is passed fit for consumption. He also noted that the activities of smugglers, persons should be vigilant of where and from whom they source their meats. Minister of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sports, Olivia Grange, has commended five-time Olympic gold medalist Elaine thompson Era. On her outstanding performance, noting that she and the other athletes have brought pride to the country. I know you will continue to stride. There are still greater heights you can reach, and I know you will. I am proud of all our athletes, and I'm particularly proud of her woman in sports, Grange said. The minister was addressing a brief ceremony at the Norman Mandy International Airport in Kingston on Wednesday evening to welcome home Thompson Aero following her recent impressive performance at the Tokyo Olympic Games 2020, where she won three gold medals. Dubbed the second fastest woman in the world, she ran an Olympic record of 10.61 seconds to retain her 100-meter title, leading a trio of Jamaican women to the podium and lowering the 10.62 seconds mark set by world record Ola Florence Griffith Joyner in Seoul 1988. She also won the 200 meter in an impressive 21.53 seconds, the second fastest time ever recorded, with the third gold medal coming in the 4x100 meter relay. Thompson era impressive performance continued on the Diamond League circuit, where she ran an all time best of 10.54 seconds in the 100 meters in Eugene, Oregon, in the United States on August 21st to inch closer to the world record marked of 10.49 seconds. She brought her incredible season to a close at the Diamond League final in Zurich on September 9, winning the 100 meter in a dominant 10.65 seconds and claiming the Diamond League title in the event. The government plans to celebrate the achievements of Jamaican athletes to the Tokyo Olympic Games at a date to be announced. A 40-bed mobile field hospital donated by the United States government to the U.S. Embassy in Jamaica, valued at $132 million, was officially opened at the Maypen Hospital in Clarendon. 
The hospital was opened on Wednesday, September 15, and forms the part of the U.S. Southern Command ongoing assistance to nations in the Caribbean, Central America, and South America, and is funded by the command's humanitarian assistance program. The field hospital, which is the second to be set up in Jamaica, is also equipped with a generator. Minister of Health and Wellness Dr. Christopher Tufton, in speaking on behalf of the government, said the donation of the field hospital shows the strength of the relationship between the countries and symbolizes the collaboration that is necessary to confront and overcome the global pandemic. I really want to put on record our appreciation for this facility. We're looking at adding capacity in excess of 300 to 350 beds. We give the standard, but we do tweak it a bit. That is all in demonstration, tangibility of our response to the treatment component of COVID-19 virus. The truth is, no public health system could have adequately planned for this pandemic, so we have to make provisions in these extreme cases, Tufton said. He added that a collaborative solution has to be found in these cases, nothing that the timing of the pandemic and its impact on us required us to involve in a terms of a plan and strategy and add a capacity as we went along, whether it's human, equipment, or infrastructure capacity. These field hospitals will serve the purpose for which they are intended, and we expect that they will continue to serve additional purposes later on. In a straight way, we have used COVID, which is a threat, as an opportunity for us to build out our infrastructure. Micro, small and medium-sized enterprises affected by the COVID-19 pandemic are to benefit from three billions in loans and grant support through partnership between the Ministry of Finance and the Public Sector and the Development Bank of Jamaica, said a statement released on Thursday. Under the DBJ Social and Economic Recovery and Vaccine, which was officially launched on Wednesday, the entities will access to funds to digitize their operations to better service clients, as well as recover from the economic fallout that has affected their cash flows. The fund will be dispersed via partner financial institution, including a DBJ approved financial institutions, as well as entities such as credit unions and microcredit establishments. Finance Minister Dr. Nigel Clark, in his address at the launch held at the Pegasus Hotel in New Kingston, explained that $2 billion will allow entities to access up to $10 million at a rate of 5%. In addition, the $1 billion Go Digital Loan Facility enables sales of less than $425 million to borrow up to $800,000 with a three-year repayment period at a rate of 2% per annum. Through the Go Digital Grant, micro, small and medium enterprises with sale of less than $75 million can access up to $300,000 to digitize their operations.